So the connection between gluten and IBS and foods, it's not just, I want to be clear that I just showed you a lot about gluten, but it's also other foods. It doesn't have to just be gluten. It, just like a person can be reactive to gluten, a person can also be reactive to other foods as well. And so here, you can see here, studies suggest that IBS patients are affected by undiagnosed food allergy and food intolerance. This is very, very big. And so this, this brings in, you know, maybe, maybe you struggle with IBS. You don't know why you're already gluten-free. What about other foods? Have you had your doctor measure you for other potential food reactivities? So one study found a high prevalence of food allergies in patients with irritable bowel disease uh, or irritable bowel syndrome and leaky gut often suggested as a leak as well. So again, different foods, gluten causes leaky gut, but other foods can also cause leaky gut. Remember, any food that can damage the intestinal lining and lead to the leakage, right, or the passage of foods through, you know, through that, that gut, right? This is your immune system. Your immune system's right here. Now it's going to go after whatever leaked through and it's gonna create a hyper inflammatory response that can not only damage gut cells, but it can get into your bloodstream. Your, remember your bloodstream is here. And once it gets in your bloodstream, it goes to your liver, it can damage your liver. And then once it damages your liver, it gets access to your central bloodstream. And this is where the real damage sets in because this damage can now go to your brain, it can go to your spleen, it can go to your heart, it can go to your bone, it can go to your skin, etc. Remember, it's, um, once we have leaky gut, systemic inflammatory damage is an equal opportunity destroyer. And we know foods can play a major role in that. Foods, again, foods can be irritants to the bowel. They can be irritants to the GI tract and create and set the stage for, um, for irritable bowel syndrome as well. Now, I would re be remiss if I didn't mention something else, and that's FODMAPs. So FODMAPs are very important to understand. FODMAPs, um, you can see here in this diagram, it's actually taken from a study published in Journal of Parenteral and Enteral Nutrition. You know, FODMAPs, here's the down here. Okay, we got the right color. FODMAPs, just put a circle around it for you. This is what FODMAPs are. FODMAPs are fermentable oligo dye and monosaccharides. So oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides. And something called a polyol. Polyols are sugars uh, found in fruits and other things. So these are generally, the, what these are, is these are fermentable sugars in a nutshell. They're fermentable carbohydrates, right? So meaning that when you over consume fermentable carbohydrates, the bacteria in your GI tract over ferment. They, are taking that excessive carbohydrate and they're using it as a fuel source and as bacteria get stronger and stronger and stronger and that can create bacterial imbalances within the GI tract that set the stage for that bloating, for that gas, and then subsequently for a leaky gut. And so again, these, these types of sugars are found very commonly in lots of foods. One of the highest food sources of FODMAP is grains, and this is why, this is one of the reasons why going gluten-free may not be enough for a lot of people. You, got, you really got to go true gluten-free, which is grain-free. You'll see up here in this diagram, these are examples of high FODMAP foods. Okay, so if, you, if you're just now learning about the FODMAP diet, okay, this is, I don't want you to freak out. This is not me telling you to avoid all these foods for the rest of your life. This is me saying that, look, if you struggle with IBS and you've already gone gluten-free the right way, you might want to look at FODMAP as a potential reason as to why you might be continuing to struggle. But there's a number of different foods here. I'm not going to read the list to you, but you can snapshot this. You can snapshot the screen here and you can capture this. And if you go to my website, glutenfreestudy.org, we have the entire breakdown of everything for you in article base so that you can get access to this information. But you can see here, excessive fructose is a type of FODMAP. So a lot of, you know, a lot of our foods today, what do they have in them? Look at baby formula. One of the first ingredients in most baby formulas today is fructose. Generally, it's fructose derived from genetically modified corn. So fructose is a type of FODMAP and it can be very challenging to digest. And so it ferments. It basically, it, the bacteria act on it, it ferments. And that gas and bloating, this is for a lot of infants that don't do well with formulas, right? Check out the fructose in these formulas. Look at the quantity of sugar. It's usually, it's number one, the number two. It's usually sugar, fructose is found as in most baby formulas, you know, traditional baby formulas, it's, it's, 
it's listed three times in the top 10 ingredients, meaning there's three different versions of sugar as the top three ingredients in a product, and usually they're fructose-based. And, and we have a lot of children today that have a lot of gastrointestinal problems, infants, right, that maybe the mom can't breastfeed, and they're being formula-fed, but those formulas are super high in fructose, and those babies' GI tracts ferment that, and they can't handle it, and it creates a lot of... Um, a lot of colic, right? Colic-like behavior. So, you know, again, maybe you don't have children, maybe, maybe you know somebody who's got a ch child that's struggling with colic and they haven't even thought about this as a potential for that colic, very important. But again, excessive fructose. This is why some of you, when you overconsume fruit, so if you have a high fruit content in your diet, you get gassy, you get bloated. You don't feel as good. And so you find that when you eat less fruit, you feel better. It's because the bacterial milieu in your gut is over-fermenting. It's, it's a very, very common problem. Now, this could be bacteria, but it could also be yeast. A lot of people that you, you will ferment the fruit even better when you have yeast. Yeast love fruit. They love dried fruit, especially uh, they love high glycemic fruit. So if you've got any inkling at all of a yeast overgrowth in your gut, and you're eating fruit and you're feeling bad, gas and bloating, etc., you might have irritable bowel because you've got excessive yeast. And sometimes it's a matter of, of reducing yeast populations and then you can eat fruit again. And sometimes it's an issue where, um, where your gut is just so damaged from years of stress, years of illness, years of mal, uh, maltreatment that, that we've got to get it to recover before it's capable of processing fruit again. It's not just fruit, right? There are vegetables that are high FODMAP, like asparagus and artichokes. There are uh, dairy products that are high in lactose. That lactose is a FODMAP, right? It's a type of fermentable sugar. We've got foods that contain high fructans. This is predominantly, this is your grains, right? The fructans are very rich in grains. You've got um, other things that contain fructans, other fruits, vegetables, nuts, etc. You've got mannitol and sorbitol. And generally, some fruits contain mannitol and sorbitol, but these are oftentimes used as natural sweeteners. So if you find yourself reaching for that cup of coffee, but you're sweetening with mannitol or sorbitol, um, and then you can't tolerate, you find that you're always bloated, this may be one of the reasons why it's better, if, if that's the case, to avoid these types of sweeteners. I mean, if you're, if you're not FODMAP sensitive, it's not a big deal to use a sorbitol, a mannitol, a xylitol, some of these different uh, alcohol, what are called polyol. Um, sugars, but but again, if you if you don't do well with them, it's definitely a good idea to keep them out. And then there's types of FODMAPs called galactins as well, and these are predominantly your beans and lentils. And so some of you, you know, when you try to eat beans, poof, right? You're you're six months pregnant all of a sudden. It's because again, these sugars, these galactins that are found in there, are fermentable, and it's just activating the bacteria in you to grow out of control and to produce that gas and bloating. And so that's what this map here is showing. You can see here, um, what we're looking at is different FODMAPs on the top, lactose, fructans, polyols, and excess fructose, and galactins. And so you can see what they do is a couple different things. Number one, they're, they're rapidly fermented by your bacteria leading to gas production, right? Number two, they're osmotic. What does that mean? They pull water. They pull water into your bowel. Right, so this is gas and bloating, and this is also swelling. Right, so they're pulling water into the bowel. That's leading predominantly to distension. Right, so excessive gas, abdominal pain, abdominal bloating, and altered bowel motility are all potential side effects and consequences, you know, of that process. So again, if you're struggling with IBS and you're already following my no grain, no pain diet, it could could be that you need to start paying attention to some of the potential other FODMAPs that you might be over consuming because they may be playing a role in what's happening. So again, just take note of this list here um, and, and, uh, and, and maybe take some notes and, and look at what you're possibly eating that might be triggering that IBS. I will say this, IBS is one of the most easy things to get to go away when it comes to, to, you know, to health issues in, in the intestinal tract. It's one of the easiest things and in my experience, Food changes, dietary changes inevitably almost always work. I, I'd say 90 plus percent of the time you don't need to go look for you know, fancy supplements, you don't need to go and, and take a bunch of medicine, you really just need to dive in to your diet. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below and as always, thanks for tuning in.